be seeking us out in Nashville. We want, we want to yeah. engage with our customers. We, we want to learn, hey, how can we improve? What are we doing well? What are we not doing well? How can we deliver better for you, right? Like, or what, what are maybe some core services that you just, you're not seeing from us today that you need to, you need to see to really help to, to kind of take that next step as a business? DJ Burnett. Chief Revenue Officer at Compass Mining. It is my pleasure to have you on the Compass Mining podcast this, this morning. How are you doing, CJ? I'm doing great. And pleasure to be here, Curtis. Excited, excited to chat. Few people know that you are actually my boss, so I hope that uh, this isn't like a, a performance review unexpected. Uh, I'm actually very excited to talk to you today. We're, as a, as a team, headed down to Nashville for Bitcoin 2024, and I'm very much looking forward to it. And I think that's one of the things that we wanted to primarily talk about today is what's going on at Bitcoin 24, what are Compass's objectives, what are your objectives? So I've got a few specific questions and some other things to talk about, but how about I just open broadly with, uh, with your thoughts? You're heading to Nashville. What's going on at Bitcoin 24? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, looking back over the last couple of years, I think this is probably the conference that has the most buzz, or at least certainly feels like there's the most buzz around this conference. So really excited about that. I think there's just going to be a, a lot of energy, a lot of, you know, a good conversations to be had, you know, as far as specific objectives for myself and the Compass team, um, you know, really focused on connecting with our customers, right? So conferences are obviously a great opportunity to do that. Sitting sitting down, you know, across the table from customers and just learning, hey, what's going well? What what can we improve on? How how can we deliver better for you? So um, that's a real focus, obviously, and excited to do that. Um, outside of that, obviously, most of the industry is going to be there. So this is a great opportunity to, you know, sit across the table and, and look for partnership opportunities. How can we, you know, grow our platform? How can we offer a better product to our customers? How can we grow, you know, grow our business and, and help serve more, more customers, right? So whether that's, you know, vendor, repair vendors, or, or uh, you know, people with rack space, infrastructure providers, um, capital providers, things like that, just all sorts of opportunities to, to uh, connect with those folks. And then outside of that, really just setting the groundwork for the next the next bull market. I think we kind of all all feel it. Um, feels like you know energy's building around that, and you know just continuing to to lay the groundwork of of hey, what opportunities are possible, and and seeing where we go from there. I I try to not get caught up in bull market expectations. I like to be head down and grind, and then wait for somebody to tell me, Curtis, did you see Bitcoin price? But man, I. I get exactly what you're saying. Uh, 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 Bitcoin 24, of course, you know, last several years has been in Miami. It's in Nashville for the first time. Um, it is, you know, probably the largest Bitcoin specific event. Um, uh, Bitcoin Magazine, who puts it on, they had a, and, and in fact, uh, Brandon Green from their team was on our podcast just a couple of weeks ago. Like, that's a good one to listen to. Jarrett and, uh, and Brandon had an amazing conversation, but they had a little bit of fun on social media this week. They, they refer to their conference as the biggest Bitcoin, as the biggest Bitcoin conference this month. There, there are a lot of conferences and, but this is certainly one to, to be at. We're, we're actually bringing a fairly large team. I, I think that there's nine or 10 of us in total who, you know, Compass Mining employees are headed down there. As I was looking at that list, many of us are coming with our own specific business objectives. So like, you know, Vishnu, who leads global logistics and, you know, Lawrence and Heather, who lead managed services and Doug, whose, you know, primary objective is, you know, is hardware sales. Um, I'm also extremely excited uh, that Paul Gosker, our CEO, is, is going to be is going to be boots on the ground. I, I, I know you shared a little bit about, um, you know, understanding Compass's specific business objectives, but do, do I have that right? We're, we're bringing a large team and pretty much everybody's got their own initial focus. Yes, 100%. So, you know, I, I think I, a lot of people, when they see Compass, they think hosted hardware, right? Or, or yep. our, our hardware marketplace. Like, and that's certainly, obviously, that was where Compass started. And, and that's where we really uh, hit our, our stride in, in the mining industry is, is on, you know, offering a white glove hosting service to retail and institutional customers. Um, but obviously, we do, we do a lot more than that. And I don't know that we always tell that story well. Um, but you mentioned it, right? We, we have product lines uh, across the, the mining industry. We really, anything that touches mining as a service is, is what we're looking to provide. Right. So um, hosting, obviously, repairs, managed services, infrastructure services, um, 
hardware sales, of course. So yeah, we're, we've got a, a, a large team there. Definitely be looking for the Compass Mining polos. And um, I wish I had one with me, but uh, definitely if, if you see Curtis try to pull a uh, Bitcoin, or excuse me, a pull a Compass Mining trucker hat, those are, those are my favorite piece of swag at this point. Oh, I love it. I love you putting the audience on point to uh, to, to hit me up. There, there's a few other things going on um, that, you know, are are worth discussing. Like, you know, I think I ran through the majority of the team who's attending. I also, you know, wanted to mention Jared Carpenter, who, you know, primarily leads our podcast. I think that, you know, he and I are going to be, um, you know, in, uh, in Nashville, hoping to secure future podcast guests. Like we want to bring valuable content and education to our, our variety audiences. So I'm looking forward to that. But then we're also hosting, co-hosting a happy hour on Wednesday night. And, you know, we're, uh, the organizer of that is Brad James, who runs, you know, uh, the Micro Minery Club and Mining with Brad. And we partnered with him on an event that was going to be Miner Mastery Live. But because of, you know, logistics, uh, et cetera, it pivoted to a happy hour on Wednesday night. I connected with Brad and although, you know, this show is going to come out right before then, there is some likelihood of additional tickets being available for that. It's going to be at Nissan Stadium. It's, you know, mostly, you know, invited guests. But if you're listening to this podcast, we're going to post a link to register. This is not a guarantee, but if there are spots are available, then we would we would love for you to join. So uh, check the notes of this podcast for a, a link on that. But then you mentioned hitting Curtis up. Um, I'm actually excited for uh, this audience to get a chance to meet and know you. Um, uh, CJ, you're going to be uh, on part of an important conversation at the conference on Industry Day on Thursday, coming live from the mining stage. You're you're part of a, a panel. Can you talk to us about what that panel is? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, obviously, very excited for both the happy hour and then the broader broader event as well. Um, specifically about the panel. So the the focus of the panel is going to be on scaling mining operations, right? Mm. So obviously, that's something we have learned in spades over the last several years, going from literally no miners to, you know, the, I would think probably the industry leader in, in hosted hardware solutions. So, um, you know, it's really, we've learned a lot of lessons along the way, right? Um, it's not just a, you know, I think our goal as a, as an, as a business is to try to um, make mining as white glove frictionless as possible, right? But there's a lot that goes into it. So really, you know, from my perspective, the focus on you know scaling a mining operation is is really drilling down into each of those different specific needs that mining operations have right and it kind of is unique to who you are right it, it, are you a public miner are you a, a small private miner are you a retail miner that has one to two units right um, and really thinking through what what are your goals what what does it mean to scale that operation from where you are today to the next level right um, you know I think some of the things that come to mind immediately is this is a really capital intensive business. So how do you think about in increasing your access to available liquidity to grow your operation? Um, operations, I, I mentioned it before, um, you know, we, we, we like to make, we like to make Bitcoin mining a pass, call it a passive activity, right? It, it's something where you can just watch those sats roll into your wallet on, on a daily and, and monthly basis. But Bitcoin mining isn't passive, right? There's a lot of, of highly qualified, uh, technically uh, uh, knowledgeable people that are boots on the ground operating, racking, deracking, troubleshooting machines, as well as building infrastructure that um, really it's, it's a full team that goes into building that. So what, what does it look like to train, hire, um, and grow a, a, a mining operation? Um, so it really, and it, maybe the final piece is really the systems, right? So, you know, I think some of the things we take for granted is what, it, what is it to run a pool? Most people don't have to do that, but what is it, you know, fleet management software? Like, what does that look like? What is it make, making sure your, your um, machines are running at the optimal efficiency to maximize both your hash rate and your power consumption? So just thinking about all of those tools that you need and systems that you need to, to scale your mining operation. CJ, that's fantastic. I really appreciate the complete rundown of, of what you're looking forward to on that panel. I'm also excited for the other panelists, Matt from Giga, uh, Stepan from Blocksbridge. I haven't got a chance to meet uh, Larry from Core yet, but I think it's going to be an exciting conversation. I'll say something else. You know, I, I actually want to dial down into several of the things that you just shared, but I want to I want to keep on. Um, you know, the panel and the mining stage, uh, we're, we're sponsoring a seat drop at the mining stage. So you, the audience may or may not 
know this, but we put a lot of effort into building a, uh, putting together a manual, building on Bitcoin, a, a, a magazine style format of effective strategies for Bitcoin mining, site development and operations. We're giving away a free copy. It's going to be on every seat inside the mining stage on Thursday on Industry Day. So if you're there, please pick up a copy. We've also made it available as a free download. We're just giving our best stuff away for free. So in the notes of this show, we're going to include the link where you can download a copy for free, but the physical copy I'm really proud of. So I hope people will will pick that up. So there, there's more than just uh, uh, the, the conversation going on. One last thing on the attendance at the conference. CJ, are you, are you approachable? If folks are watching this and they've heard some of the things that you're speaking about, you know, they just come up and shake hands and say, hi, what, what's it take to meet CJ Burnett, my, my boss? Uh, how, how do people come and meet you at the conference? Of course. Yeah. Happy, happy to please, please approach me. If you see me at the conference, I'd love to chat, love to hear, you know, your story, you know, how, how you inter- have interacted with Compass in the past and in, love to learn more about you. Um, I'll probably be branded in a Compass Mining Polo. So that's probably the easiest way to find me, but maybe I'll, you'll see me in one of those uh, coveted trucker hats as well. I, I tell people I'm going to be bra- I'm going to be branded as bald with glasses. So uh, folks usually don't have a trouble uh, uh, spot me. Uh, you know, getting back to I, like I've really enjoyed this conversation about um, Nashville. I'm looking forward to it. But for the benefit of our audience and you know our customers, et cetera, can can we dial into a couple of details? Would Would you be able to like walk us through the journey of a customer experience when you partner with Compass Mining from like the initial equipment purchase to ongoing hosting and maintenance services? Is there any any information you could share about the customer customer experience working with Compass. Yeah, absolutely. So we've, we've spent a lot of time and energy over the last two years really investing in our customer experience. Um, we, you know, certainly growing as a startup, you, you hit a lot of hurdles, you run into issues and, and you learn from them, right? So, you know, I think really the focus for us has been on improving our our website, improving our customer experience. So literally, you know, it's as simple as going to our website. If, if you're looking to purchase hardware, going to our website and with a few clicks, you can purchase the latest generation hardware, right? So a lot goes into that, right? So obviously sourcing, you know, the, 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 um, you know, next generation hardware, right? The, the latest generation hardware, making sure that the hosting counterparties that, that are servicing your equipment, right? Are providing the highest level of customer experience high uptime in delivering a great, a great experience for our customers. Um, things like uh, uh, providing you with a re, uh, the tools to manage your uh, fleet on a daily and monthly basis, right? A, a, a robust customer dashboard where you can go and, and monitor uptime, pay your monthly hosting bill or auto pay. So if you don't want to log into your, your dashboard, you, you don't have to do that. So really just providing you with all the tools to manage your, you know, both the purchase within a very frictionless purchase process to managing, you know, your, your operation on a day-to-day basis. So um, it's, we try to make it as simple as possible and, but certainly love all the feedback that we get from customers on, Hey, these are friction points and we want to improve them over time. I love that. I, I love your transparency, your, you know, uh, you know, the opportunity to engage with you directly. I'm, I'm thankful that we, the, we went that way. When, when I think about customers, we serve a variety of customers, but they're, you know, it's important to us that like, we don't just look in the matter of the moment and Bitcoin price and what's it's doing. We have to think about the long-term health of, you know, of our customers or our business. W- would you be able to like speak at all about what strategies we at Compass Mining, you know, use to ensure long-term success and, you know, really to strengthen the relationships with our, with our customers? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a, a another area where we spent a lot of time and energy over the last two years. And in for for those that don't know, where Compass was, where we started was basically a platform where we aggregated retail customers with larger hosting counterparties. So um, really a a uh, kind of maybe use uh, other things that might be helpful, like a like a WeWork model or something like that, where you can you know, maybe you don't have the economies of scale to go to a commercial building and, and run an office, right? But we were kind of came, aggregated those customers and, and was able to um, make that more appealing to those smaller smaller customers. So that was really where Compass started, right? So partnering with third-party infrastructure providers to provide rack space to small retail and institutional uh, customers. Now, over time, you know, in order to deliver the, the level of customer experience, accountability, and uptime that that our customers need 
right? We're really focusing on vertically integrating our infrastructure stack, right? So yeah, in the, where, where it started with relying um, entirely on third-party providers, now we have our own teams on the ground operating these data centers, making sure that uptime is at the highest levels for our customers. Um, we're also actively uh, looking to purchase more infrastructure for ourselves, where Compass is actually the the owner and operator of this capacity, right? So we have more visibility into the, the energy contracts, uh, just making sure that we can deliver the highest level of uptime for our customers. And then um, other things like making sure that repairs are, are being handled timely, things like that. Um, so just really focused on on that level of, of vertical integration and making sure that there's we can be accountable at each step of the process to our customers because nobody's going to deliver the the level of of service to our customers that um that they need as compass can wow you know i vertical integration is not just a buzzword it's like actually the key to success the a phrase that, that i use when i speak about this is that nobody cares more about our miners than we do and the the, the sites where we've been able to employ our own staff and operate our own data centers um, that's where we have the highest percentage of not just uptime, but also utilization. And those are phenomenal statistics. We're, we're delivering the best customer experience that, that, that we can on sites that we actually operate ourselves. And to see, you know, internally and in this conversation that that's a huge part of our roadmap is, is acquiring and operating our own sites. And even to hear that there could be, you know, blossoming opportunities in Nashville that we would be able to, you know, bring forward. I, I know because I have a unique perspective that, that we, you know, gave birth to the idea of Accelerated by Compass, a managed services offering to help um, bring some of these services forward to the market. Could you elaborate a little bit on how Compass, you know, how we're positioned with unique experience, et cetera? What, what, a little bit about what is Accelerated by Compass and what is the value that we bring, you know, clients in achieving their mining goals? Yeah, absolutely. So Accelerated by Compass was really born out of this idea that Obviously, Compass is looking at vertical integration for ourselves, but we have a lot of customers. We have to solve for for a problem for our customers. How do they mine profitably for epochs, right? Or having yep. cycle, you know, decades even. And you know, we recognize that over time, this is a highly competitive business, and over time, we have to figure out a way to offer more and more value to our customers at lower and lower price points, right? So for some customers, they they might be capitalized or interested or or have a thesis around. How, how do I get more and more control over the infrastructure, right? Um, because then that gives them the level of control and, um, you know, insight that they need to effectively communicate and, and be accountable to their stakeholders as well. So really uh, Accelerated by Compass is our, is our initiative to help those customers, you know, really focus on those maybe a little bit larger customers that, hey, you know, maybe you have a couple thousand machines with Compass and over time you want to roll those machines into infra infrastructure that you own, right? And so really partnering with those customers and saying, how do we transition you from a hosted a hosted style relationship with Compass where you can have your own infrastructure that meets your own requirements, whether you know power costs or jurisdictional preference or size, things like that, um, and really transition you from a ho traditional hosting relationship into a services relationship where we can be that operations partner for you and manage your site and help you to develop the site or locate the site where it's a little bit different and really drive your end economics as opposed to staying in a host seed relationship for a long period of time. CJ, I, I love that you're constantly advocating for the health and benefit of our of our customers and and it makes me proud to uh, be a part of your team. I, speaking of being a part of your team, just as, as a midway check-in, you know, how how am I doing, boss? Is this a, you know, am, am I am I make, am I making the grade? You do, you're doing great, Curtis. I'll, you know, we still got some time left, so I'll, we'll reserve judgment until the end. You, 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 you say that, but you know, actually, we we try to keep our, um, you know, our podcast at roughly that half hour length. There's no, you know, no, nothing set there. Um, uh, however, um, uh, at the end of this conversation, we're going to cut immediately to, you know, roughly ten minutes of a conversation where I was recently able to sit down with Paul Gosker, our CEO. So he's co-founder, former CTO, and now, you know, for the 
the last you know couple of years has been acting as CEO, uh, leads the entire organization. So he and I sat down recently and had a really transparent conversation about health of our customers, the trajectory of Compass, you know, seeing some of our, you know, sharing some stories about some of our backgrounds. So uh, we, you and I might be closer to done than we expected in order to uh, uh, still come in in that, you know, that roughly that 30 minute mark. I'm extremely excited to share with our audience that conversation with Paul. I also just really value your transparency. From, you know, my perspective, we have to lead with education and content and we have to be transparent with our, with our prospective customers with our current customers. So I want to compliment you on that, CJ. Um, we, we are wrapping up here. I think that um, uh, there is an opportunity to share any other final messages. Was there, was there something that you would like for our customer base or, or our audience to hear before we do close up today's conversation? Yeah, uh, just reiterate, you know, definitely if it, be seeking us out in Nashville. We want, we want to yeah. engage with our customers. We, we want to learn, hey, how can we improve? What are we doing well? What are we not doing well? How can we deliver better for you, right? Like, or what, what are maybe some core services that you just, you're not seeing from us today that you need to, you need to see to really help to, to kind of take that next step as a business? So, you know, we're, we're as Curtis mentioned, we're really excited to get get into Nashville, meet our customers, meet, meet potential partners or, or current partners, and just learn to see what we can do better. Um, outside of that, you know, obviously I know the customers will really value and, and uh, partners will really value that conversation with Paul. I know he's a great, great uh, individual and has a lot, to, a lot of good things to say, um, you know, about our, our trajectory, our, our path and, and where we go from here. Iterations and feedback, being present and able to listen to our customers about the services and, and opportunities that they need and that we're there and we're able to listen. And now we can take that information and actually improve our operations, improve our process. Um, that's a, a, a recipe for winning in my perspective. Uh, CJ, because I'm old, I am most active on LinkedIn and I hope people will track me down and find me on LinkedIn. But um, I, I think I got a little bit more gray hair than you do. Where, where are you most active, CJ? Are you on? Are you on Twitter? Uh, where would people find you to engage with you more? Yeah, great, great question. So definitely on Twitter, but not necessarily the most active there, um, but more active on LinkedIn as you are, as you are, Curtis. So definitely hit me up either platform. Uh, would would love to engage and, and learn more about you. You know, uh, speaking of hitting uh, folks up, I, I, I would say um, if you're attending the conference, they have a pretty rich app and we've done a good job of going into that app and like building out some information that would be helpful for our, our customers or people who want to meet with us to see, easy to contact, easy to find. So I'd encourage people to look at us specifically in Nashville on the Bitcoin 2024 um, app. Other than that, CJ, this has been uh, really my pleasure to have this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you in Nashville. Awesome. See you there, Curtis. So, Paul, as I was just saying, the intent in discussing uh, with you today was just a, a chance to learn a little bit more about your role at Compass Mining and about uh, what the future looks like at Compass Mining. Obviously, I'm uh, wearing the T-shirt and I had the benefit of knowing that you're um, CEO, but that's that's actually been an evolving role. Uh, our Compass has gone through interesting leadership uh, changes over the years. Would you uh, speak for a moment or so about your role as CEO? Sure. So I suppose it's probably a good place to start. I originally was the uh, CTO of Compass um, and one of the co-founders. Um, as management's changed over the years, uh, I've now found myself in the, the CEO role. And I suppose the, the main priority for me when I left being CTO and was initially co-CEO was not growth of the company, but of stabilization of the company and of ensuring that we can give the kind of experience to our customers that we, that we set out and wanted to give them initially. You, you said a word right there that's one of the most important words to me, and that's uh, customers. As a, as a CEO, you have a variety of responsibilities. Um, how do you uh, keep plugged into the, the needs of the customers? That's actually a pretty good question. So, I mean, not, not many people will know this, but um, initially when I became co-CEO, we, we had a lot of issues with, with support. Support tickets weren't being answered fast enough. People were waiting for answers. And I knew this was a problem. And I knew some of what the issues were. But in order to really find out what our customers' issues were, I took on the role of one of our customer support agents. And I sat down 
and did their job for weeks, same way they would do it with the same tools they that they had at hand. I didn't use the kind of extra access I might have. I only used what they had. So I could see it, you know, from our support team's perspective and also see for myself what was it that was wrong with the customer experience and the support they were receiving. So in doing that, um, it gave me pretty much all the insight I needed into having our internal development teams build tools out to support our own customer support people so that they could do their job better and in turn give the customers a better experience overall. And um, I mean, over the course of the last nearly year and a half now, the quality of the level of support that our customers are receiving is significantly better. And it has been noticed by them in numerous messages or posts to us that um, the support element of our of our company has drastically improved. So I'm, I'm quite happy that we have gotten to that point. Um, I don't think it's ever done. I don't think it's ever good enough. We'll always try and improve it more. But compared to where we were a year and a half, two years ago, it is uh, it's night and day different. So thinking about our customers again from a mining perspective, we serve a variety of customers from very large organizations that have thousands of um, miners and millions of dollars invested, but all the way down to individuals like you and I were at one point who have one miner. And, you know, I use the word pleb uh, as, a, as, as a word. It's just uh, someone who wants to do what you describe. They want to get access to Bitcoin in the unique way, not going to an exchange. And when that customer with one machine suffers an operational challenge, a machine's down, curtailment, a facility issue, it's crushing to them. And I know that you, you know, feel that. What, what does Compass see as a future um, for helping that customer who has you know, just one to five miners? How do we continue to be of good service to them? So for, for me, one of the most important things for ensuring smaller customers like that have a good experience is through using the appropriate third-party partners mm. that we have. Um, some are better than others. Uh, we've learned a lot of lessons along the way over the last few years. Um, and primarily to try and vertically integrate Compass into um, that mining stack uh, much more so. And what I mean by that is when we are the boots on the ground running the operations of a facility, all of the incentives are aligned that when that guy's, that when that customer's machine goes down and he's one machine that's 100% of his fleet down, when we're the boots on the ground there, we can get that pulled off the racks quickly. We can get the problems diagnosed. We can get it repaired. We can get a quick turnaround time on that. Oftentimes, as we, we've learned in the past, when the operators are not as aligned with us in relation to our customer's experience, our customers can experience excessive downtime, excessive repair times, and it's extremely frustrating for us. And we, when we're not the ones actually you know, physically pulling the miners, repairing the miners. Um, we have limited ability to to speed these things up. They, there's an element of it, it's somewhat out of our hands. And in going forward, what I want us to do is for, for any of our customers who are on that, you know, small to medium level, that they would only be in facilities that are operated and run by Compass. So everyone's incentives are aligned. And we can have quick turnaround times on repairs, quick turnaround times on diagnostics, fan replacements, any of that stuff that needs to happen. When, when we're more integrated into the stack, the customer has a better experience. Paul, that is, that is fantastic. That is a, a message that the Bitcoin community and our customers need to hear. And I believe we've discussed this before, but we, we should do a better job of telling our own story. We've, we've accepted the challenges as our own responsibility and have not been defensive. And maybe that's, that's right, but we've also made amazing strides to be of service to our customers. When you think about ways that we could tell our story better, what, what comes to mind? How, how would you like to see us communicating with our, 
our customers in the Bitcoin community more clearly. So I think moving forward, I mean, first of all, I would acknowledge that we, some of, some of what we are weakest at is talking about the good things we've actually done for our customers. Most people have no idea the time and, and money we have put into trying to give them a, a better experience. And they, you know, through no fault of their own, we just have not told people about it at all. So in moving forward, um, I would like to be able to draw attention to the good that we have been doing for people, be it through social media, through articles, or through some form of interviews like this, and to talk about what we have been doing. Because I think a lot of it is somewhat opaque to our customers, and that, that's our fault, because we're not talking about it enough. Um, and oftentimes, like when I was going through those support tickets, oftentimes all people wanted to know was, what's going on with my miner? Just, I just need to know what's going on. It's okay if it's something bad. You know, you, you guys, we can get it fixed. But I just need to know. Someone just needs to tell. Communication. Yeah. And we need to communicate better. And that is everything we've been building over the last year and a half. Mm. Impressive. Impressive.